Did you know that the official park hours for Disney World Parks are really just the time that the rides and attractions are open, but it doesn't mean that those are the only times you can be in the park. So in this video, I want to talk to you about all the things you can do before and after all four Disney World Parks are open. So let's start with some basics. Um, as I mentioned, you can go in the parks before they open usually, and you can stay up to one to two hours late usually. In fact, if you've ever seen some of the great photographers that are in the Disney parks that take the nighttime pictures where nobody's in them, those are usually because those photographers just wait. They wait for people to pour out the parks and then they can walk around and take fantastic pictures. Most parks will allow you in up to an hour beforehand. Um, it's less for some, but up to an hour. The, um, and at nighttime, it's up to one or two hours afterwards usually. Although Disney's transportation policy often says they, I think it's an hour before and an hour after or something like that is what they say their transportation is available. The, re the reality is that they operate much longer than that. In fact, in the morning, the buses usually start around 7 or 7.15 a.m and at the Epcot monorail usually starts around 8 a.m. And at night, they will usually go a little longer than an hour, but just to be safe, you know, I would jump on a bus an hour after. And as I go through each of the park to tell you things to do before and after, just keep in mind that Disney can change things at any time. So this is accurate to the best of my knowledge as of the time that this is being recorded, but it can always change. So let's start with the big one, Magic Kingdom. Now Magic Kingdom last year started allowing people in up to an hour early. And in that hour, you can do a lot of things. You can rent a stroller and Main Street is open so you can shop and eat at the places that are open on Main Street, including Starbucks. And um, you can also get photo pass pictures taken. So this is a great time when to get those iconic pictures taken before everyone is sweaty. You can do that, do that at the front of the park. You can do that at the castle. You will be stopped at the castle until the park is officially open unless you have an early breakfast reservation or something that would give you permission to go outside of the hub in front of the castle. Um, so in addition to stroller, shopping, eating, and photo pass pictures, there is also the opening show, which takes place five minutes before the park opens on the stage in front of the castle. So you will probably want to watch that, and then the park will be officially open and you can be on your way. Magic Kingdom, at the end of the night, you again have photo pass photographers available, which is great if you want to get pictures taken at night and as opposed to during the day, it kind of gives a different look to your photos. Some shops will still remain open. And then there is an unpublished thing called a kiss goodnight. And that often takes place 30 minutes after park closing. It's not every night, but you can ask cast members. It's most nights. Um, I believe it also sometimes takes place 60 minutes and it's just three minutes um, of music and it's a lovely way to end a night. <laughs> So that is Magic Kingdom. Let's skip over to Epcot. Now Epcot's opening procedure has changed a bit over the last couple years. They used to let you in further. Now they have been letting people in as far as Spaceship Earth, which is not very far, but still you're in the park. There will be a photo pass photographer out in front of Spaceship Earth at the front of the park right after you go through the turnstiles. So you can get a picture taken there. Um, you should be able to also rent a stroller and then at the point where they stop you at Epcot, the Jammeters play, they're, they're noisy, they, they bang on trash cans, that's why they're called the Jammeters, and they play before the park opens. Ooh. And then once the park opens, you can go from there to go on the rides that you are interested in. So that's Epcot. 
in the morning. At night, you can take some pictures. There will be some PhotoPass photographers out. I happen to really love the World Showcase at night. It's beautiful. You might even consider taking pictures from the World Showcase towards Spaceship Earth so you get both in the same. It's really nice. And some stores will remain open at Epcot as well. The World Showcase in particular is really lovely to stroll through at night because most people leave and you can kind of just walk around. And if you happen to want to take your own pictures, it's a good time to do that. Let's hop over to Hollywood Studios where they generally let you go in as far as the Charlie Car Cafe, basically, basically the end of the street that you enter on. And you can rent a stroller again. You can visit some of the shops that are open and that includes Starbucks. And so you can get your coffee, get your pastry, whatever. And, but most importantly for a lot of people is that Jedi train, training signup is available early. So if you want to get there, uh, get to Hollywood Studios very early, the Jedi training will be available, and if you can get through that line quick enough, you can get back and you can start riding right away. At closing at Hollywood Studios, again, some shops will still remain open and photographers will be out. I did want to also mention that Fantasmic is often scheduled after park closing. That's very confusing to people. When we publish schedules, a lot of people say, you said Fantasmic is starting at this time, but Hollywood Studios closes earlier, and that's true. But as I've already mentioned, the official park hours are really just for the attractions, so nighttime shows sometimes will be scheduled after that because it really only pertains to the rides, and so nighttime shows can take place after that time. So you may see Fantasmic after the official closing. Finally, let's talk about Animal Kingdom. I happen to really like Animal Kingdom opening, and while a lot of people are going to arrive there early to head to Flight of Passage, because a lot of people, uh, a lot, um, a days, most days, Disney World is allowing people to go into Animal Kingdom and go right to Flight of Passage. But if that's not your thing, there's some other things you can do. Um, photo pass pictures again, great, great time to get pictures in front of the Tree of Life. You can see Divine. She is um, beautiful and covered in and um, in greenery, and she moves. You can see her at a lot of different times of the day, but I just like to do it right when it, the park is opening because she's right there to the right as you enter Animal Kingdom, so you don't have to remember to come back and see her later. And she's a lovely way to start the day. Um, they also have what Disney calls small animal attractions in the Oasis. Now the Oasis is just the beginning, uh, the front part of Animal Kingdom when you go in. And by small animal attractions, they mean they have cast members that are holding containers that have animals in them. So if you have animal lovers in your family, you know you might wanna stop and look at those animals. Um, some shops will be open. You should be able to rent a stroller. And the last thing that you can usually see is what Disney calls winged encounters. And basically it's birds that fly over the crowds just before the park opens and it's really beautiful. So once that happens, usually then the park will be fully open and you can go ride. Um, at night, once again, there will be some shops available and some photographers, but also the Tree of Life Awakenings will take place until 15 minutes after park closing, which is my personal favorite way to end an Animal Kingdom day because um, it's beautiful to just be able to stand in front of the Tree of Life and see the different animations. There are four different ones. Um, they go all the way until 15 minutes after park closing. So I hope that's helpful for information on things to do in each of the parks I mentioned, including touring plans and places to eat. Please check the links in the description. Thanks for watching.